I would like to thank everyone for coming out today. Uh, we have several members from various devout faiths coming together to represent a common cause. This gathering of diversity within itself is a beautiful display of unity. I myself am the daughter of an ordained Baptist minister in South Carolina. With that traditional, even what some would call old fashioned background, I believe that all patients should be given the opportunity for improved quality of life. And that is what we are currently collectively and on a very conservative level advocating for here today. Uh, I'm going to introduce uh, Reverend Dr. Jeremy Rutledge, followed by Representative Ivory Thigpen. Uh, also, we have Rabbi Eric Malo. We have uh, Representative Terry Alexander. And also, uh, visiting from out of state, we have uh, Reverend Al Sharp. Okay, can you hear me all right out there? A little? Okay. <clears throat> a little louder, is this a little better? Okay. Uh, good morning, my name is Jeremy Rutledge, and I'm the senior pastor at the Circular Congregational Church, which is an historic congregation of the United Church of Christ in downtown Charleston. I've come to Columbia this morning to stand with my interfaith colleagues in support of the Compassionate Care Act, which will help those who are suffering with chronic and terminal illnesses. I'm here because my faith compels me to care for the suffering. In my 17 years in congregational ministry, I've been present to many suffering with illness. My vocation before church work was that of professional hospital chaplain and bioethicist. In that work, I was often at the bedside of someone who was dying, and I worked closely with their doctors and families as we tried to ease their physical and emotional pain. In that work, I almost always saw the best in people. Regardless of our many differences, we always came together in the hospital to care for someone and do everything we could to help. And that's what the Compassionate Care Act does. It brings us together across the lines of faith and partisanship that too often divide us to do something to help each other. I dare say that in these polarized times, a bill like this is good medicine for us all. It shows that we can still work together to make a difference. And have no doubt, this bill will make a difference. If we work together to pass it, then real people will suffer less. With access to medical cannabis under the direction of their doctors, real South Carolinians will have less pain. Some have suggested that those of us who support this bill have been put up to it somehow, or that perhaps some special groups or secret interests are behind it. But I would like to say very clearly that no one has put me up to this. I traveled to Columbia today to speak for myself about an issue that affects many who suffer with chronic and terminal illness. I am here because I believe the act is aptly named. It really is about compassionate care. I'm here because my Christian faith taught me a golden rule that we should treat others in the way that we would want to be treated ourselves. And all of us, were we in pain, would want to have our pain addressed and managed by our doctors. Most South Carolinians, I think, understand the golden rule. According to a benchmark research poll taken last December, 72% of us support medical cannabis. This may explain why the bill is bipartisan and why representatives of such diverse faith traditions stand together in support of it. We know 
that we should care for those who are suffering. Yet before I close, I would like to tell you why I am really here, why this issue cuts close to home for me, and why I am grateful to all who have worked so hard to bring the Compassionate Care Act to South Carolina. When I was in college, my father was diagnosed with cancer, and I left school for a time to return home and help my mother take care of him. He became a hospice patient in our home. And I remember the doctors and the nurses working so hard to help us manage his pain, which grew worse and worse over time. It was incredibly difficult to see someone we love so much in so much pain. In my father's case, we relied on morphine, not cannabis. Yet under the supervision of his doctors, the medication was able to ease his pain enough that he could rest. Friends visited, family sat by his bedside, everyone came together to help. And we created a place for him that was loving and dignified. I know people today in Charleston who are in the same situation, trying to manage the pain of chronic and terminal illness, working with their doctors, they should be able to, to use whatever medication is deemed appropriate, including cannabis, to ease and manage their pain so that they can live out their days in loving and dignified ways. None of us should live or die in unnecessary pain, and all of us should do what we can to help. That is what the Compassionate Care Act does it helps people who are in pain. As this bill moves through the process, I offer my own prayers that it will pass and that our state will embody the golden rule when it comes to those who suffer with illness. May we treat our neighbors with the kindness and compassion and care that we would all want for ourselves. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Representative Ivory Thickpin, but I also have the privilege and the pleasure of being the pastor of the Rehoboth Baptist Church. As both a legislator and a health care practitioner, uh, I, I believe that it's necessary to, to give my support to such efforts. When we look at the name of this bill, Compassionate Care Act, there could not have been any better name given to it. For indeed, we should, as a civilization, as well as humanity and legislators, always seek to care for others and have compassion. When we look to the Christian scriptures, Jesus' example is very clear. Not only does he say, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy, but at every miracle and every turn of him engaging and caring for the lives of those that he so dramatically changed, the scriptures read, that he had compassion. And this day and age where we really need to be our brother and our sister's keeper, when we have individuals who have illnesses that debilitate them, illnesses that are terminal, illnesses that reduce their quality of life, let alone their quantity of life, we must have compassion. And so as we look to pass this legislation, I want you to think about if it were your family member that was suffering, if it were your family member that was in debilitating pain, and there was something within your means to care for them, then you would by all means have compassion. So as we seek to encourage others and educate them, because I think education is a major piece, educate them on the benefits of what this type of legislation can do, we will see a lot of people across the state of South Carolina be helped because we were, as our scriptures say, called to be compassionate. Thank you so much. Good morning. I'm Rabbi Eric Malo. In the book of Exodus, God tells Moses, I've heard the cry of my people I will save them with an outstretched hand. 
We are made in the image of God. And being made in the image of God, we have the opportunity to extend our hand too, in compassion, in love. We have the opportunity to lift up the fallen. That's what the Compassionate Care Act can do. It can lift up those in pain. It can lift up those who are suffering and provide them the relief they need. It's not a can we do it, it's a must. We must do it. Yes. The medieval rabbis taught and they understood well what we are still debating today. They wrote, where there exists a possibility that a certain cure or medicine is administered and the patient may have a quality of life or it may have the opposite effect of hastening his death, it is permissible to provide the medication. Those words are 500 years old. Surely, we can do better today to provide care and a better quality of life to those who need medical cannabis to quell their suffering. We are behind the times. There can be no sufficient excuse to believe otherwise. Thank you. Good morning. First, let me thank uh, these members of the clergy for being here and showing their support, and for you, the media, for being here. Why am I here? As a representative um, from Florence and Darlington areas, as a pastor from the PD area, on almost a daily basis, I know of friends who are suffering from chronic pain. Whereas if they take prescribed medicines that they have now, it would have them all discombobulated, addicted, particularly our veterans. If they do not take the medicine. They walk around or they cannot walk around because of the excruciating pain that has grabbed their body. What we've found and what study has found uh, that medical cannabis, cannabis is an alternative to the opioids and it's an alternative to pain. Alternative, another option. Just as you would go to the store and get a leave or Excedrin. Why is it or why can't an individual who are suffering from pain not have an option as well. This is what this bill is supposing to do. Give those who are suffering, give those who are hurting relief. Not only does it relieve the sufferer, but it also helps relieve the caregiver. And I think we sometimes miss that point, the caregiver those who are seeing their family members suffer yes. because they do not have the medication that will give them relief. What kind of state or what kind of country is this? Have the assistance, have the medication, have the know-how to provide relief for its people and refuse to do so. And until it hits home, we will probably have a different posture. But I'm here because I've seen it. I've been approached by those who are hurting, who are saying, Terry, we need that bill. It relieves me. It helps me. It, it comforts me. So I'm here supporting compassionate care because, in a sense, that is what it is doing, has been already mentioned. It shows our compassion for those who do not have. So I encourage you who are watching, I encourage you to call your legislator and encourage them to support this bill, get it out of committee so we can get it to the governor's office for signature. Thank you very much.
I'm the Reverend Alexander Sharp, Executive Director of Clergy for a New Drug Policy. We seek a health, not punishment, response to drug use. I am delighted to be here with a genuinely interfaith, interracial gathering on behalf of this bill. If you look at the folks who uh, are supporting and signing on, you will find Christian, Jewish, and Islamic voices coming together for all the reasons that you've heard. I'd like to support what has been said, but perhaps not been said clearly enough. Scientific evidence supports this bill. That is not in doubt. If you're going to oppose this bill, you may have your private, somewhat cramped reasons for opposing it, but you can't oppose it because there isn't scientific evidence. Uh, in my state, we have passed a bill that provides medical cannabis as a substitute for opioids. Think of that in the midst of an opioid crisis, a response that is less expensive, has less side effects, and relieves pain. 33 states have approved this bill. It's time for South Carolina to do likewise. Thank you.